What is science? Uh, it's in everything, isn't it? You can't avoid science. It's interesting because people who believe in God say that about God. He's in everything. No, no, but this is, this is like proper. This is, you know, if people want to believe in God, that's all right. But science is, without science, you wouldn't have any of this. Well, it's almost the antithesis, isn't it? That if you believe in the magic of, you know, God and all his impossibilities and theological and, uh, you know, that's, science looks at hard empirical facts. See, all that went right off my head. I'm into science. I'm into the weird science. Um, you know, I like the fun of it. There's a lot of fun in science. Let's start at the beginning. The Big Bang. Okay, here, what, what do you think of this? An atom, right, is mostly nothing. One analogy is it's like a fist in the Albert Hall. So an atom, the size of the Albert Hall, the matter part of it, okay, the nucleus would be a fist. The rest is space, okay? That's one thing. With a fly buzzing around it as the electron, just a, a, yeah, a charge. Now, when we look at it on that scale, it's easy to understand that all matter that exists, everything in this universe was once in the space many, many times smaller than an atom. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. That doesn't, no one, most people watching this are going, I don't get that, my head hurts, what else is on? Everything in the universe could be crammed into the, the tiniest thing imaginable. And that was sitting there in the beginning of time, right? 15 billion years ago, right? And then it expanded into a universe in a few minutes. What was the minutes then? No. So we don't know then. We don't know how long it took. Not that it matters, I'm not bothered. It's here now. And that's what I'm saying to you. It's all amazing that, the Big Bang thing. I've said to you, was it a Big Bang? Or was it just because there was nothing else there to drown out the noise? At the end of the day, it's that whole thing, isn't it? The noise. Was there even a noise if no one's there to hear it? Don't be worrying about all that stuff. Leave it to Stephen Hawking to do it. Of course he can sit there and think about it. He's got nothing else to do. Let him get online. Oh, th it's great to think. I like thinking, but my world's too busy. I've always got to be doing other things. He sat there just thinking. I'd be the same if I was in his shoes. Exactly the same. Thinking. But he's, he's, he's done that much thinking. He's thinking about things now he doesn't need to think about. Pack it in, Steve. Have a rest. <laughs> Play Pac-Man. Do, do whatever. Just do something else. Stop worrying about the Big Bang. <laughs> He's wasting his life thinking about something that doesn't matter. We don't need to know the answer. He's wasting his life thinking about something that doesn't matter. Good. It, it doesn't matter, does it? In your life of things that matter, where would you put the Big Bang? No, but then, but then no, where do you draw the line? We're not here for long enough. Well, we're not here for long enough. But then enough. nothing matters then, does it? So yeah, we, it does, yeah. What, what does? Matter. What matters? Well, keeping people happy. Okay. You know, uh, looking after people. So, so keeping them happy could be giving them life-saving drugs, or feeding a, um, a starving world, or letting someone become mobile that was otherwise yeah. immobile. And that's, that's fine. But you're talking about space. When did it start? Where does it end? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know, it goes on and on and on and on. We know that. Atoms, they're not getting in the way. Stop worrying about them. I read something about some scientists trying to smash one up. What for? <laughs> they're not in the way. If they were big and I kept bumping into them, I'd smash them up. Break them down. Gravel. Make gravel out of them. <laughs> Make atoms. Make atoms so tiny that they're only gravel. No, but what, what I'm saying is it's not an issue. And right. there's loads of problems in the world. There is loads of problems. You may mention them all, the starvation, all that. And someone's faffing about with an atom. That isn't going to sort anything out. Some people say mathematics is the tool of science. You need maths to do anything in science yeah, of precision. I believe, that, I believe that. You do. I like doing DIY. I've told you there's a lot of maths involved. Accuracy. Right. 
That's fine. Okay, just taking it slightly even more accurate than, than DIY. Um, micro surgery, um, putting a man on the moon, the figures had to be... Pointless. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, you see, if we didn't have the numbers, that wouldn't have happened, but all we've done is create something else we didn't need because of something else we've got. We didn't have to put man on the moon. What was right. he doing? What did he do? Nothing. Has he been back? No, he hasn't. He didn't enjoy it. No one, no one else has gone up there. The only reason, the thing that I've thought of recently when I thought that would be good to go into space again is to get rid of rubbish. That's what I'd do. They're always going on about landfill and everything. It's not good. We can't get rid of all this. Shoot it up there. Stick it into space. It's mm. expanding. There's loads of space. Mm. Stick all the shit up there. Don't be sending a man up. I, I, I heard that one of them astronauts knocking a golf ball about on the moon. Leave your golf clubs at home and take some shit up with you and tip it. <laughs> yeah, but do you know how much fuel is needed to get a kilogram of something up out of the Earth's atmosphere and into space? Me. He had a golf club with him. A I golf know. ball. Okay, but how much, how much rubbish do you think we can really get rid of? As much as you want. But how much fuel does it take? I mean, there's, it's a matter of economics as well. Think of the fuel that, were, the fuel that would take a bin bag full up into space would far outweigh that bin bag being on Earth. But they keep going into space now. They're not going to the moon. They knock around space messing with satellites. Right. Less astronauts, a couple of bin bags. Chuck some shit up there. And what's good with it is it won't break up. It'll just keep circling. And up there then, space isn't space anymore. It'll be like a museum because there'll be old stuff from years ago. At the moment, we're not, we, we don't save anything, do we? It's all about recycling. Mm. Everything's destroyed. There's no evidence of the past. Mm. Go into space, it'll be like Antiques Roadshow of shit from the years gone by. Right. I'd like to see this episode. That's mental, Carl. It's not mental. It is mental. How would you get the rubbish up there? In the rocket. Yeah, but you don't know anything. Do you it's know how much there. fuel it takes to well, burn... they're going up anyway. I'm just saying, at least if they're going up there, do something. Do something different. It's space. There's nothing in space. Well, let's put something there. That's what we do as humans. We don't like plain space. We fill it. That's what we do. So just chuck some shit into space. That's all I'm saying. If you're up there, get rid of a few bin bags. Brilliant. That's space. There's nothing... Don't you understand what I'm saying? There's nothing... Yeah, but it's mental. It's, 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 everything's wrong with it. It's, a ter once again, a terrible, flawed theory. Time machines, they're funny, that's science. Well, we're sort of going into the future, aren't we, all the time, by no, every definition? Day, every day we are, yeah. Exactly, yeah. But I'm talking about people want to do big leaps, don't they? Yeah. I met a scientist once, you know, um, that old fellow we met, proper scientist. He said he'd love to get in a time machine. Patrick Moore? No, um, Wolf, Heinz Wolf. All right. I met him, he said, I'd love a time machine. Where would he go, back or Yeah, forward? back. He said he wanted to go back, because he asked me, he said, where do you want to go? And I said, oh, uh, I think I picked a holiday that I had. So you went back five or six years? Because I knew exactly what I'd be going back to. He enjoyed that week. I'd be going back. I wouldn't have to pay for that holiday. I've already paid for it. It's not like I'm turning up and someone's going, get out, you shouldn't be here. I was there. So you're going back because you reckon you'll save 400 quid? Well, it's 250. It was a bargain. In Mallorca, a villa. Swimming pool, three bedrooms. That's what you'd use a time machine for? I'm just saying, why do people always have to jump so far So hold on then, let me get this straight. Are you going back and it's you now and you've had that five years and you're loving it, oh, I remember doing this, or are you going back and just reliving it like a memory and no one knows the difference and nor do you? It's like you just do it and then you have to... No, no, I, everybody there doesn't know I've gone back in time. Right. So you've me... come from the future then? Yeah, but they don't know that. No, I know, but you're in your body then, you look like you did then, but actually, it's Carl five years on. Yeah, but I'm having the same holiday, and I'm going to enjoy it more. So you're not coming back with going like, oh, Rita, go and get that checked out, no. and no? Just having a holiday. But the weird thing is, this professor bloke, he wanted to go back, he said he wanted to go back when, like, cavemen were knocking about, to see how they sort of mooched about and how they survived. See, that to oh. me is more interesting than going back on a holiday I've already had. I'll be honest. You wouldn't go back to being a caveman. You'd eat it. 
You'd be going, oh, God, send me back. And they go, no, no, you've got to stay here for a bit. It's an expensive machine. About 10,000 years. Yeah.